Sage the Prince was lord over the seven districts of Dyfed. Once upon a time, he was in Arberth, one of his chief courts, and he decided that he felt like going hunting. He went to Glen Cook to run his dogs in the forest. He blew his horn to start the hunt. As he listened for the barking of his dogs, he heard different barking that he didn't recognize. He saw a clearing in the forest, a sort of field. As his own dogs reached the edge of the clearing on one side, a stag bolted out of the forest on the opposite side with the other dogs running after it. It made it to the middle of the clearing, and then, in a flash, the other dogs were on it and tackled it to the ground. Sage hardly gave the stag a second glance, but he was fascinated by the color of the dogs. They were pure white, except for their ears, which were as vibrant red as their bodies were white. He charged at the strange dogs and drove them off their kill. Then he set his own dogs on the carcass. As he was letting his dogs feed, Sage saw a rider coming on a huge speckled horse. The rider came up to him and said, Sir, I know who you are, but I refuse to acknowledge you. All right, maybe that's your prerogative. I swear to God, it's because you're so ignorant and rude. Sir, how was I rude? I have never seen such rudeness. When someone's dogs make a kill, you don't set your own dogs on their stag. I call that rude. And although I won't beat you up over a stag, I swear to God, I'll do a hundred stags worth of damage to your reputation. Sir, if I've done something wrong, let me compensate you to win back your friendship. How do you propose to do that? In a way that's appropriate to your rank. I just have no idea who you are. I am Aran, the king of the other world. My lord, how can I gain your friendship? Here's how. There's another king in the other world, Summerbright. He never stops attacking me. Save me from his persecution, which you can easily do, and you'll have my friendship. Of course, I'd be happy to. Tell me how. Here's how you can do it. Make an alliance with me. I'll put you in my place in the other world. I'll make you look exactly like me, and that's how it'll be until a year from tomorrow. A year from tomorrow, we'll meet back here. So, I'll be there for a year. Can you tell me something about this enemy of yours that I'll be facing? Summer Bright and I have agreed to duel a year from tonight. We'll meet at the crossing of the river that divides our kingdoms. You'll go there disguised as me. You need to wound him, but only once. Now here's the thing. Although he'll ask you to hit him again, don't. Not even if he begs you. Because every time I thought I'd finished him off, the next day he'd be back, fighting me like nothing ever happened. All right, but what should I do about my own realm? We'll switch places. I'll arrange it so that no man or woman in your realm figures out that I am not you. I understand. I'll leave right now. You'll have an easy journey and nothing will stand in your way until you reach my kingdom. I will guide you there. Aran did as he promised, and he guided Sage until they could see Aran's court and its outbuildings. There. The court and the kingdom are under your rule now. Go to the court. Sage approached the court, where he went into the great hall to take off his boots. All the servants greeted him formally as they approached. The hall was prepared, and the queen was with them, the most beautiful woman anyone ever saw, wearing a golden outfit of luminous brocade silk. They all went to wash up and sat down for dinner. So the people of the other world ate and drank, and poets and musicians performed for them. They all had a great time. Of all the courts Sage had ever seen anywhere in the world, this one had the most amazing variety of food, drink, and golden vessels and royal jewels. Then it was time for everyone to go to bed. And Sage went to bed with the queen. When they got into bed together, he turned his face to the side with his back to her. He didn't say a word to her until morning. The next day, they were friendly and enjoyed talking to one another. But whatever affection they shared during the day, every night for the next year was like the first. Sage spent the year hunting, listening to bards, drinking, making new friends, and relaxing with them.
until the night of the duel. He went to the meeting place, and the nobles of the realm went with him. When he reached the river crossing, a knight got up and said, Nobles, listen carefully. This is a duel between our two kings, one on one. Each has laid claim to the other's land. Now all of you keep a safe distance and leave them to it. Then the two kings charged at one another in the middle of the crossing and clashed. Sage hit Summerbright in the middle of his shield boss so that the shield split in two, all his armor was shattered, and Summerbright flew the length of his arm plus his spear shaft off the back of his horse and hit the ground. It was a fatal blow. Sir, what right did you have to my death? I had no claim against you, but now that you've started the job, by God, finish it. Sir, I might well have regrets. Find someone else to finish you off, because I won't. Take me away. My death is truly upon me. There's no way I can keep protecting or providing for you. Gentlemen, start taking names and find out who owes me allegiance. My lord, everyone does. You're the only king in all the other world. Then Sage accepted homage from the men and started to take over the land. Before noon the next day, the two kingdoms were under his control. After that, Sage headed back to his own people and went to Glen Cook. When he got there, King Iran was waiting for him. They were glad to see each other. I heard what happened. May God reward you for your friendship. When you get back to your land, you'll see for yourself what I have done for you. May God reward you for what you've done. Sage, Prince of Defed, looked like himself again and took his own appearance back. Iran traveled to the Otherworld Court and he was overjoyed to be back with his couriers and his warband. Iran spent that day relaxing and enjoying himself, sitting and talking with his wife and his noblemen. And when it was time for sleep, instead of drinking, they all went to bed. Iran got into bed and his wife came to him. Right away, he started talking to her and caressing her, and they made love. That hadn't happened for a year, so she was suspicious. God, what a different mood he's in tonight compared to the past year. She stayed up thinking about it for a long time. After a while, Iran woke up and tried talking to her once, twice, and a third time. She never answered. Aren't you going to talk to me? I mean, I've already said more than I've been allowed to for a year, at least behind closed doors. I guess the rules have changed. Excuse me? We talk all the time. Shame on me for saying it, but for the past year, the routine has been that from the time we get between the sheets, we don't fool around, we don't talk. You haven't even turned your face to me, let alone more. I can't believe how loyal that man was. He's a real friend. Sweetheart, don't be mad at me. I swear to God, from a year ago until last night, it wasn't me sleeping with you, or even laying down next to you. Iran then told her the whole story. As God is my witness, you do realize what he turned down, right? That's quite a bond you inspired. Nothing would make him break it, not even me. That's just what I was telling myself a minute ago. Meanwhile, Sage, Prince of Defed, came home to assume his functions. He started by asking the nobles of the realm what his rule over them had been like for the last year, compared to what it was before that. My lord, you were never so wise, so friendly, or so generous with your property. Your decision-making was never better than it's been this past year. Well, you should really be thanking the man who was actually here. This is what happened. Sage told them everything. We thank God you made that friendship. As for the standard of government we got this past year, you won't take that away from us, surely? Absolutely not. I swear to God. From then on, Sage's friendships with Iran grew stronger and stronger. They sent each other horses and hunting hounds and hawks and all kinds of presents that each one thought the other would enjoy. And because of how he had spent that year in the other world and ruled it so successfully and united the two kingdoms through his prowess and daring, the title Sage, Prince of Dyfed, fell out of use. He was then called Sage, the other world ruler, from then on.